Hey everyone, in this short little video I just want to explain the thought experiment that's going to allow you to understand when the demand curve for bonds shifts and when it doesn't. So we've already talked about the derivation of the bond demand curve, now I want to talk about things that are going to cause it to shift. And I'm going to work with a particular example and that's going to be the expected inflation rate. Okay. So just to make things simple and uh, you know make sure we're all on the same page, we're going to talk about one year U.S. Treasury securities, so we're not going to worry about default or anything like that. And we'll say that these bonds have a face value of $1,000. Okay, so these are U.S. Treasury securities with a face value of $1,000. So it's a promise for the U.S. Treasury to give you $1,000 one year from now. Okay, and I need a frame of reference every time we do talk about these shifts, you need a frame of reference. So let's just say for the sake of argument that we're currently at point A, and let's say the price of the bonds is $900. So as of right now, market participants are willing to give the U.S. government $900 today in exchange for getting $1,000 a year from now. And let's just say for the sake of argument that the current expected inflation rate over the next year is 2%. Now remember, as inflation increases, that erodes the purchasing power of the $1,000 from the face value of the securities. So the higher the expected inflation rate, the lower the purchasing power of that $1,000, the less desirable the bonds are. Okay. So here's our frame of reference. Current price is $900. People want to buy this many bonds. Okay. B1 amount of bonds. Now let's just say for the sake of argument that the expected inflation rate falls. Let's say it falls to 0%. So let's say there's some new expected inflation rate that is 0% for whatever reason. It doesn't matter why the expected inflation rate falls. I'm just saying, what if? Okay? Well, think about that. If people think the inflation rate is going to be 0% over the next year, then that means they think the face value of that bond, which is a nominal amount, it's just $1,000, $1,001 bills, that means you think it's that $1,000 is going to be able to purchase more stuff than it otherwise could have if the inflation rate was 2%. Okay? Well, that means you think getting $1,000 from the U.S. Treasury a year from now is a better deal than it was before. Okay? So more people are going to be willing to spend $900 today to get $1,000 from the U.S. Treasury tomorrow. How many more? I don't know, and it actually doesn't matter. Um, I'll just say this is the amount of um, U.S. Treasury bonds that people want to hold, which means the new combination of price of 900 and dollar value of bonds or U.S. Treasury bonds or Treasury securities that people want to hold is right here at point B. Now, point B clearly is not on this initial bond demand curve, so there must be some new demand, bond demand curve, which we'll call bond demand 2, that looks like this. So the bond demand curve has shifted to the right. So now let's think about this. If you decrease expected inflation, that's going to shift bond demand right. Okay? Well, why does it shift it to the right? Because the lower the inflation rate, the more that $1,000 is worth a year from now, the more people want to purchase those bonds. It's a better financial investment. Likewise, if there was an increase in the expected inflation rate, and I don't think I have to draw this, that's going to end up shifting the bond demand curve to the left. Why? Because at a higher inflation rate, that $1,000 doesn't buy as much as it did before, so it's a worse financial investment. Fewer people are going to want to hold them. The bond demand, uh, demand curve is going to go ahead and shift to the left. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. I did this example with expected inflation, but I think you can get the thought experiment here, which is anything that makes this $1,000 more desirable a year from now is going to cause more people to want to hold bonds, so the bond demand curve is going to go ahead and shift to the right. Anything that makes that $1,000 less desirable, increase in expected inflation, maybe you think the U.S. government's going to default on its bonds, or whatever. That's going to mean more, fewer people are going to want to purchase these bonds, so the entire bond demand curve is going to go ahead and shift to the left. And that's more or less um, the thought experiment in a nutshell. Hope this helped.